welcome to We Review Stuff, the podcast where we review stuff. Every week, we review two techie things and one wild card as we work through everything in the world to work out what the very best thing is. I'm your host, Alex Harosh, and today I'm joined by Anula, Adam, and Brody. What's everyone reviewing this week? Anula? I'm reviewing something that isn't plumbing related, uh, but it could be. Intriguing. Adam, what about yourself? Feels like you just gave us the riddle of the Sphinx or something. <laughs> um, I'm reviewing an app, a cool Android app that could be used for interesting productivity hacks, but can also be used for stupid stuff. I love stupid stuff. Stupid stuff is the best. Um, how about you, Brody? What, what are you going to surprise us with? So my wild card this week is maybe the greatest redemption arc of the 21st century. Ooh. Intriguing. Aww. Very, very intriguing. I hope it's not a $2.50 burger. Did anyone else just <laughs> panic a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> I can't smell Hungry Jacks, so <laughs> we, might, we might be fine. I'll put all your minds at ease. This is not, I'm not, I'm not pulling any, anything silly today. No silly Billy. It's just, this is a straight up new entry to the list. Okay. Everyone relax. I'm more tense than ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. And with that in mind, let's get started. So, Anula, what do you have for us? Well, I am reviewing a brand new innovation from Apple, a uh, double tap. Do you guys All get right, it? Double... Did you get the joke? Ah. Yeah, it, it's like, it's plumbing related. Huh? Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 you know, it's funny when you have to explain it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, for those in the room who aren't up to date with Apple, what is double tap? Yeah, so pretty much Double Tap is a new feature on the new Apple Watches uh, from the Apple Watch Series 9 and the new Apple Watch Ultra. Is it the Ultra 2? It is the Ultra 2. Yeah. Um, ultimately, it's a feature that lets you tap your thumb and forefinger or your middle finger, as I've realized, together twice. And it's supposed to activate the primary function of the app that is currently on your watch face. So in theory, you can use it to answer phone calls, hang up on people, pause music, scroll through the tiles, a whole bunch of things. In practice, however, it's not quite there yet. So what's the problem? So the main problem that I've encountered with Double Tap is that it's it's just a baby right now. <laughs> <laughs> like like the, this is this, there's the, always this same trend that happens when Apple releases a, a new feature, kind of similar to like the dynamic island where they make a big to do about it. Um, and they say that it's going to be really exciting. But the problem is that no developers have had a chance to actually do anything with this new software. Um, and most of the time, even though the uh, feature actually technically works, it's not actually very useful. And this is the same problem that I'm having with Double Tap at the moment. I so See, I've seen the ads for it on TV and it looks magical. Like watching the ads, I'm like, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Um, yeah. But can you, how does it work? Does it work okay with the kind of proprietary Apple apps? Like for instance, if you've got your camera open, like they show on the ad, double tap to take a photo or double tap to snooze your alarm to uh, yeah. to answer a call or whatever, uh, or to control your Apple TV. Does it work well for those sort of things where Apple actually, you know, is in the driver's seat of the developer experience? See, uh, this this is the problem. While, for, while it does work for a lot of things, even Apple itself is a little bit behind. Um, and it just kind of seems like they haven't quite added the right like ID code to some of their own applications. So for example, in intuitively, I would assume that on an Apple Watch that I could double tap and I could pause my workout or I could stop my workout. Uh, kind of makes sense that you'd mm. be able to do that, but currently you can't. It actually thinks that you're starting a new finger workout. Oh my God. Actually, yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. Definitely hurts my hands after a little while. Too much double tapping. The, mm. the hand is not meant to do this that much. It's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so yeah, like while it does work for some things, like absolutely it does on the default app, um, you know, you can pause music, you can play it, you can scroll through your apps. There's still a lot of things that I'm missing. Um, for me, the most glaring issue is with the Apple fitness stuff. So I would expect that for an Apple watch, which primarily used to be targeted towards, you know, fitness and arguably still is. Arguably still is, but now it's more about saving your life, right? Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I would assume that considering that this is what the uh, hardware is supposed to be tailored towards, that they would have had the forethought to, uh, you know, assign the right ID in their code so that uh, you could actually like stop and start workouts. But or even like that, a user pick their own primary work, um, primary function in the workouts app. Like you yeah. want to use mm -hmm. double tap to pause your workout. You want to use it to stop. You want to use it to mark a new segment kind of in the same way that you can customize the action button. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's, that's a great question that that leads into is can you customize any sort of actions to that the double tap can trigger? No. You can't mm. at the moment. And that's not to say that that isn't going to come. Like I, it, it may very well come later on down the line, but knowing Apple, that'll probably be in like five years when developers <laughs> have already fixed all the issues anyway. Mm. Um, but yeah, the, there's, I think that at the end of the day, it's a really good option. Like, but at the moment, because it's still just a baby, it's exactly like Dynamic Island in the way that you're kind of looking at it being like, cool, you did a thing. Mm. Now what am I supposed to do with it? Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah, that leads into my question at all when you're saying about the accessibility thing because uh, I never actually used this feature, but around the time it was announced, that was like what all the chatter was about that like everyone's like, hold on, you can already do that with accessibility features. So what is the actual difference between like that accessibility feature of tapping your fingers and this like new S9 exclusive yeah, no, from what I understand, it's the way the software handles it, since the new S9 chip makes it a lot more battery efficient, and it's kind of designed to pick up that motion, so it's a less drain on the battery, whereas okay. the old assist, the old um, version that works on any watch is a lot more demanding in terms of battery life and resources. Okay. What Alex said. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I guess, like, to take a step back, like, a bit like we've talked a lot about the gesture and what it can do and what it can't do. But does it work reliably? Like a lot of hands-free implementation for text not been good in the past. I think this is definitely one of the better hands-free implementations. Can I would say that currently it works probably about like 80% of the time. Um, one of the big things with Double Tap uh, is that you need to raise your wrist first. So the watch needs to be active um, first before you can use it. So you can't just, you know, have your hand dangling by your side and Double Tap to stop. A, an alarm going off, for example. Um, so there's always like that extra step. And it's like, well, you already have your hand up. How much more effort is it to just take your other hand and press on it, you know? Can, can we agree that this is actually the antithesis of hands-free because it necessitates hands? <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, you're, you're not double tapping your elbows. That is it. That would be very difficult. <laughs> um, I'd like to see that in next year's watches. <laughs> yeah. You Double heard us, Tim. Let's go. <laughs> um, yeah, like I definitely think that in, in like the pros column, I guess, for Double Tap is that it really does feel like Apple is angling as far into you having to use your phone less. Mm. So... Obviously, adding more accessibility features to your watch means that you're not going to touch your phone as much. Um, and in this one, you don't even need to touch your watch. It's almost like they want you to be using all of your devices as passively as possible. Mm. And I think that that's super interesting. Mm. Um, I also think it kind of like links in a way to the dynamic island. Um, I've ranted about this on reviews.org slash AU before. Um, but pretty much like the dynamic island is almost designed to let you access more directly from your home screen and shorten the amount of time that you actually need to be actively using your phone. And I just think that it, it's really interesting that both of these kind of are coming to not ahead, but they're here at the same time, because it really does just like showcase that Apple wants you to really need your devices, but also just to not need them at the same time. It's to use them in a smarter way. 
Mm. That's really good marketing yeah. speak. Yeah. So oh, yeah. what about the cons? The cons are the fact that it's a baby and that it doesn't necessarily work yet. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to like, to be able to, as you said, like customize the gestures. Like my ideal version of this is like, I'm at a party and I can tap my nose twice and it sends a message to my partner that says, let's get the hell out of here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It, that would be perfect, yeah. The gesture all of us need. Um, <laughs> but Anula, so um, what do you rate double tap? I would rate double tap a single tap. Adam, so what's happening? Ooh, what is, <laughs> what's happening is a fun little app called MacroDroid, right? Now, MacroDroid allows you to create macros for your Android device, which is essentially... Uh, triggers that will cause an action, right? And that sounds pretty esoteric, I suppose, until you realize like how broad that is and how much you can do with it. Give us an example. Okay, for instance, when I get a text message, I want my phone to speak and say that I'm receiving a message from the person's name and then read the message to me, right? Now you can also add constraints to that. So you could say, only do that if my headphones are connected at the time, right? There's all kinds of things that you can do with this to automate neat little interactions with your phone. You could set up a macro that says, I want you to automatically skip every skippable ad that I hit on YouTube okay. without me having to tap my phone, right? Hey, Adam. I love uh, that. Adam, mm. have you heard of a little something in Apple land uh, called shortcuts? Yes, yes, I am aware. It is much like shortcuts, but much more powerful, right? Okay. For, for instance, uh, it also has uh, geofencing and geolocation. So you could say, anytime I am at this location, I want my phone to do this, right? Uh, anytime I leave this location, I want my phone to do this. Apple also does right? that, but go on. All right. Um, and, but the cool thing with this is that there are also forums where people have created their own macros and they share them with the community. And there's just, oh, just like with Apple shortcuts. There's thousands and thousands <laughs> of them. But this is for Android. <laughs> uh, I guess the Android people need a win now and again. <laughs> they do. It's not coming through their tablets. So that's right. It's certainly not coming through the, the Pixel tablet. No. Um, but yeah, it just gives you all sorts of interesting little variables that you can play around with. And there's, of course, lots of really interesting and productive things you can do with this. And you can also do really stupid yeah, stuff. Yeah, right? I'm interested in the stupid stuff. Well, for instance, uh, I'll see if, um, if we can actually hear it. Yum, 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 electricity. <laughs> <laughs> so now when I plug my phone in... It says yum, 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 electricity. I love electricity. And did you record that or does course, that come with no, it? No, of course I did. Of course I recorded Excellent. it. Excellent. Um, yeah. So uh, it, it just brings me joy because now I know that anytime I plug my phone in, it's going to remind me that electricity is its food. So <laughs> I feel like I've barely scratched the surface with dumb things I can do with this. And it makes me very happy. Does it integrate into other apps as well? Or does it have to just be native um, Android apps? Uh, no, there are lots and lots of plugins to integrate with other apps. There's right. like a really vibrant plugin community to uh, integrate with all kinds of different apps. What about smart home devices? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure about smart home devices, but uh, it feels like something that if if it can control your Google Home app on your phone, that by extension, it should be able to control smart devices. Um, one of my favorite uh, shortcuts that I'm using, which is actually currently my action button on my iPhone 15, uh, is my cross post to Twitter from Twitter to threads, uh, <laughs> which is like so handy um, because I don't actually need to enter either of the apps to be able to post something. So I'm able to just uh, literally tweet or threat into the That's void. Right. Is that something that you might be able to set up for Android users as well? Look, I'm pretty certain like almost any app you can access on your phone, you can set up an, a related action and then constraints to make sure that they only do it at a certain time. So it's it's pretty simple kind of if then, you know, if when type statements. Mm -hmm. uh, but 
it's put together in such a simple way. It has, uh, everything is color coded, right? So you can see all your triggers are in red, all your actions are in blue, all your constraints are within, are in green. And so you can be really certain when you're setting something up, it takes you through a little setup wizard uh, that you've set up a macro that's going to have the, uh, the intended effect. That sounds really helpful because I know like, you know, when playing around with shortcuts, you know, if you want to get like really deep into it, it can get a bit imposing. And... Yeah. yeah. That was going to be what I was going to say. Like Same. The, the few times that I've messed around with shortcuts, it's like I can do really basic stuff, but anything past that just gets like, feels like a little too much work. It feels like a little, I don't know, like unapple of like things just being like very simple and straightforward. Like it doesn't feel like it's a, yeah that's what reddit's for yeah and it yeah. and it, it feels like with this that it really walks you through the process and makes it very simple to understand uh what what triggers are going to cause what actions mm. uh and kind of dummy proofs the the process now there is a free version and a paid version right the free version i believe uh, limits the amount of macros you can create or have running. So it's micro. Uh, that's right. It is micro droid. Uh, however, if you have a Google play subscription, I believe it unlocks the, uh, the full version of the app. So. Interesting. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, do you know how much it costs? $8.99. And that is a one-time purchase. It is not a recurring payment. Oh, that's, we love that's that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so Adam, what do you write macro droid? Oh, I rate it a couple triggers and a constraint. Cool. And finally, Brody, what do you have for us? And is it a $2.50 cheeseburger? Uh, it's not, but you might argue that it's just as tasty. So what I'm bringing today for my wildcard entry is uh, the, in my opinion, uh, as I said, maybe one of the best redemption arcs of the 21st century. Uh, so my wild pick for the list today is the one and only Robert Pattinson. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you just blew my hair back, buddy. I, I honest, <laughs> Honestly, I thought that you were going to pull out like the Donut King uh, uh, twisties. I, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I really thought that was what was coming. This is no, way better. I, I, yeah. I seriously, I, I don't even feel the need to discuss this, number one. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that I've got everybody on board because, as I said, I, you know, it, it, it's not necessarily that Robert Patterson himself needed redeeming, but, I mean, it's no secret that he might have been in, like, the most ridiculed movie of the 21st century. Hey, Twilight is a masterpiece if you like <laughs> terrible <laughs> movies. Yes. Not going to lie. Don't hate the first movie. That's just my opinion. Like, I think it's got terrible dialogue. I think it's shot pretty compellingly, and I think it's like it's got a nice look there that's I'll, I'll and our pats there. is there you gotta yeah. love it <laughs> that's right okay but um let's take a step back brody for those of us who aren't familiar with robert patterson's filmography um walk us through the redemption arc like why is he your pick for the list like what's what's his arc it goes further than just the movies he's been in to be honest but starting in uh the Twilight series, obviously, is his most famous role. Um, and, uh, oh, sorry, Harry Potter before that is uh, Cedric Diggory. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, Edward Cullen in the in the Twilight series, which, again, don't hate that first movie. And, in fact, uh, he, he his character in that movie made me start wearing Ray-Ban sunglasses because I thought he just looked so damn cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, so where, but where it goes from there is obviously uh, he kind of, I, I wouldn't say disappeared, but like I, I, you just didn't hear of him as much. I, I think he sort of went quiet for a couple of years. There, um, he was filming a few Twilight movies. Yeah, there were a few <laughs> Twilight movies. And yeah. he was actively talking about how much he disliked the Twilight yes. movies while filming I, them as yeah. well, which so I think is, part of it. which is just like icon behavior. Yeah, that was like laying the groundwork for the redemption arc. Yeah. So, so what happened next? Yeah, still you, like, if you look up those interviews that he even does today, like, I find him just so funny to watch when he's discussing those days. And he's like, he's somebody who you could call this maybe like some privilege, but uh, he kind of seems to be like just a really lazy, relatable guy. Like, so, uh, so after um, the Twilight movies, 
Uh, if you ever had any doubt in his uh, acting prowess, I suggest you go watch the movie Good Times by the Safdie brothers because he just blew me away in that movie. Um, it's like about as good for your blood pressure as uncut gems. So Ugh. beware. Yikes. I, I believe that he was the only good thing about uh, Tenet. Christopher Nolan's Tenet. Uh, you said this was a redemption arc, but you're talking about Tenet. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's great in it, honestly. I think he's really, really good in it. I do um, think that he was really good in it as well. I have to agree with you. I just love to watch him. Like, yeah. And I think it sort of paved the way to his role as Bruce Wayne. And I think he's also, once again, the most entertaining like thing in the DC universe for like the last decade. Yeah, without a doubt. And I think it's just outrageous that after that movie, the change of ownership and the, the new CEO at uh, Warner Brothers and how they sort of um, immediately sort of like pushed that Batman to the side. And they're like, this isn't actually part of this new DC universe. And I'm like, it's the best thing that you've had like yes. for uh, like a decade. Like why yeah. would you just sort of I'm... throw it to the side like that? Oh, I had no expectations going into that Batman movie uh, because I actually don't like Batman as a character. Like, I, Where, I, where, where? My parents died. Now I'm rich and fight crime. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm Jeff Bezos who also beats up the mentally ill. Um, but like, so I don't vibe with Batman at all. And so I didn't really expect anything. I was like, eh, you know what? I guess I'll go see it. And I remember a point in the movie where I was sitting there. I was like, this is very, very good. Like almost took me by surprise mm. where I was like, I am enjoying this a lot. Way more like, than I expected. I mean, like it, look yeah. at Bruce Wayne. Yeah, he's an emo Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Again, with the sunglasses. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, it, Bruce Wayne is emo regardless. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it felt more like watching something like, like a gritty kind of like neo-noir. The trailers may look like a Cure music video. Are you guys aware that Robert Pattinson also is a songwriter? And a musician. I did not know that. Uh, I mean, to him. I'd love to listen to it. Apparently after Harry Potter, he was living off Harry Potter money in like an apartment in Soho and he was trying to just like make it as a musician. And he was trying to do that for many years until he ran out of money and went back to acting. Wow. <laughs> I, what I like about Robert Pattinson is I feel like he, um, Daniel Radcliffe, Radcliffe and Elijah Wood have all had a very similar career trajectory where they're like, we're going to be in some of the most famous, successful franchises in the world and make tons of money from it and then just do weird stuff. Like yeah. acting like Batman in one of the most successful franchises in the world. So weird. Well, but also High Life, you know, like yeah. one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen. Like the one of the weirdest sci-fi movies I've ever seen. I think we went to see it together, Alex. Yeah, yes, we did, Brady. Uh, and oh, we're also forgetting about The Lighthouse. Like if we're going to talk about Robert Pattinson. The Lighthouse. Oh, so that was man, what, was... what a movie. Yeah. Man can wear a cable vest. Oh, absolutely. Cable jumper, yeah. I mean. He can wear the hell out of that jumper. Yeah, and uh, uh, that's sort of where I wanted to uh, to end on for his filmography, which is not just his performance in The Lighthouse, but all the stories that came out afterwards. And I don't know if this is method acting or just like being an alcoholic, but, uh, you know, there are all these stories. One of my favorite ones was where uh, in an interview with Robert Pattinson, he was just, it was like he was coming to the realization, like just then and there in that moment that being drunk on set all the time and pissing his pants might have been a little bit annoying <laughs> <laughs> for everybody else. But, but I mean, poor it wardrobe. Was, it was perfect for the character, though, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And one of my favorite stories. Well, I thought is, this was meant to be a redemption arc. I, it is still. I, I love this honesty coming from him. And he was saying that he, he sort of realized that one day when Robert Eggers had to tell him off because there was a scene where Willem Dafoe was laying with uh, him on the bed and Willem Dafoe looked at Robert Eggers and said, if he throws up on me, I'm leaving this movie. <laughs> Whoa. And that's wow. when he realized. I think you really batting for him on this as his redemption arc, like this particular part, like it just shows that you have two small young children. Like you're so <laughs> just like, well, at least he was honest about it. At least he's yeah, honest I about being his pants. Him. They have no shame. No, <laughs> no. about that. No. Uh, so Robert um, Patterson's a problematic fave. <laughs> yeah, problematic fave. Like, yeah, I, I, he just... Obviously, that's not the part that's relatable, but also I love that um, 
You you can't even count the number of times Brody has thrown up on Willem Dafoe. <laughs> <laughs> but just even for the fact that uh, Batman got delayed, reportedly, I don't know how true this rumor is, because he simply would not stick to his fitness regime and wouldn't get ripped. <laughs> 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 just to finish uh, up on that last anecdote the last most relatable thing about uh robert pattinson was in the middle of uh lockdown when everybody was losing their minds he was interviewed by gq and uh how he had been spending his time was trying to invent a method to eat pasta one-handed and he had uh invented a sort of waffle cone that housed uh spaghetti <laughs> 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 if you haven't read that interview, I highly recommend it. So yeah, that's my wild card for today. The uh, the redemption of Robert Pattinson. So you're specifically writing the redemption of Robert Pattinson? Um, what would you score it? Five spaghetti pillows. And now we're up to everyone's favorite part of a show, where we argue about where everything we reviewed should sit on the list. Anula, do you want to start us off with Double Tap? Where do you think Apple's latest software innovation on in wearables deserves to be on the list of everything great? Mm, okay, okay, okay. The question is, am I rating it on the potential for what I believe it can achieve in the same way that we kind of rated the iPhone 15's USB-C on the potential of what you can do with it? Or am I rating it on exactly what it is now? Because those are very Ooh. different. I think that's up to you. Very good question. Because mm. I kind of feel like I, like this is the definitive list of everything and I don't want to put a baby down down because that's just going to be terrible for its self-esteem yeah, we probably like, shouldn't put I'm... babies down yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, i didn't mean that way <laughs> not, not like the vet way just rating babies like man this guy like he just <laughs> he can't go to the bathroom by himself i've never heard him say anything that makes any sense can't even like, hold his own head up like yeah, it's insane honestly. like him and robert pattison <laughs> yeah. just throwing up on each other constantly exactly. it's insane and at least robert pattinson can hold his head up i mean um anyway we're getting off track we'll we'll come back to robert pattinson um i think that rather than um ruining double tap self-esteem um and giving it most likely an anxious attachment style um mm -hmm. i would really like to rate it on its potential um, and I think that the potential for it is quite high and I love the idea of not touching my screens more especially because my fingers are normally a little bit sticky um <laughs> for so... eating pasta out of your waffle cone <laughs> exactly yeah but one-handed so imagine yeah. how much tapping you could do yeah, if you were right. eating your pasta one-handed yeah you've um, got your apple watch in one hand your waffle cone in the other that's it's right you're living the dream I think that considering uh, I do see a time in the future when it probably will become more customizable and Apple's likely to just grow on this, I think that I want to put it up there uh, above Marble Snap, but below the LG Neo Chef microwave. I think that's actually really fair. Yeah, I think it's I think it's pretty fair. I do think it has the potential honestly, to be pretty amazing. And I would even be comfortable with it being at a higher spot on the list. I Certainly, can't put it above my drink bottle. But uh, uh, you could put it above the Neo Chef. Yeah, a microwave. True. Like, <laughs> I mean... Uh, like, as we have discussed, Ferg probably uses it for monstrosities, so... That exactly. is true. It is just a microwave. And if I recall correctly, the microwave has, like, the like the, the dial that, like, builds upon itself, and I hate that. There you like go. For the timing. Yeah, you're right. Screw it. Take that, Ferg. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Double Tap is going above the LG Neo Chef 25 liter um, microwave and below the perfect drink bottle, the Pro I and one liter. Mm. Okay. okay, Adam, you know what question I'm going to ask you. You do. Is do. Macrodroid better or worse than the concept of soft shell crab? Look, I, I have to say, I think it's probably more utilitarian yes. than soft shell crab. <laughs> Take it down. Um, I, I would like to say that maybe soft shell crab should sit higher on the list because... It's not what we're talking specific, about. <laughs> specifically because of double tap, because those soft shell crabs could just double tap the hell out of that thing when you think about it. <laughs> um, 
but uh, I, I'm pretty comfortable. I, I think it's probably got more utility to it than the swipe wipe app. I'd be comfortable with it sitting between the find N3 and swipe wipe. But do you get to judge things based purely off their appearance, like the swipe wipe app slash Tinder? Oof, I mean, that is, it is tempting, isn't it, to play into our baser <laughs> instincts. There probably is a macro you can add to that, uh, to macro droid that will let it do that. That will just, just play Tinder you. for you? Yeah. <laughs> Automate Tinder. I, 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 I <laughs> would be willing to bet someone has figured that out. So, um, but yeah, I, I feel like it could potentially sit just right above swipe wipe. Brody, do you want to defend Swipe Wipe? Hmm. No, I think. Uh, no. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a. Uh, I agree with you, Adam. Like the utility of it sounds pretty appealing, and mm. as you said, the how user friendly it is, and as mm. we discussed, versus something like shortcuts. I'm. I think it's right. I think Man, it's right. I. You know what? I would actually put it above uh, Marvel Snap. You want to put everything above Marvel yeah, Snap. You're yeah. really <laughs> angling to get Marvel Snap down the list. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, I, I, I'd be comfortable with it going above Marvel Snap, um, but I'm not going to fight too, like, you know, too stridently. I'm really excited for when we find the next thing, like your next concept of soft shell crab that you are willing to fight for. Anula, there isn't another one. That's why it's so important to me. <laughs> this is your white whale or your it white really crab? Is. Yeah, exactly. Your gently deep fried crab. I will leave it to democracy. What do you say, Alex Brody? Oh, again, I, I, I think the Oppo Find and Fray is probably better than Macro Droid, especially because of the camera bump that we all love. I do love that camera. I'm just fighting against like the wrong people because I also want you to put it above Marvel Snap. And I'm talking to two (laughs) absolute addicts (laughs) sitting in front of me, just waiting for their next fix. I saw you both look at your phones earlier and I was like, I swear to God, I bet they're playing Marvel Snap. Uh, I'm I'm playing it it up right now. You are. Ah! (laughs) And and you're also talking to three people who love that camera bump. All right, fine. Love that camera bump. Fine. Okay, so just below the uh, Find N3, but just above Swipe Is that where we're at? Yes. I'm happy yeah. with that. We've taken a detour, but we've gotten back to the same place we were originally. Brody, your problematic fave, Robert Patterson's Redemption oh. Arc. So you're specifically I mean, rating... He nearly pissed his own pants. Just... <laughs> <laughs> To start, like, is the redemption arc better than the Hungry Jack's two dollar fifty barbecue cheeseburger? Oh, oh yeah, one hundred percent. Okay, cool. Let's are we? Are you rating the, the redemption letter. arc or just Robert Pattinson? Pattinson in I, general. You know what? It depends on what's going to get me higher in this list, I guess. I mean, Play you the did game. rate his redemption arc. You did give the rating on his redemption arc specifically. All right, okay. Rules, rules, rules. Put him at number four after the switch. <laughs> I'm 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 happy with that. Like, it's hard to think of someone who went from pop idol to auteur. Look, you know? the problem is you didn't actually sell me on the redemption arc because you finished it off by talking about how he was so drunk on set that William Defoe was like, "If he vomits on me, then I'm out." So, like the well, the no, redemption no, 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 arc. No, 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 no. To be fair, he finished it with spaghetti waffle cone, yes. which I think is like punching your best one on the way out. Yeah. yeah, but Molly Bowser's recipes are still probably better than the spaghetti waffle cone. Yeah, right. for sure. Uh, but how do we know? You haven't even seen it yet. And look, I'll just read this little snippet from the GQ interview. Nevertheless, Patterson says he conceived of a brand name for his product, a soft little moniker that kind of summed up what he thought of his pasta creation looked like. Piccolini Cuschini. Little pillow. He thought he'd give the product another go with me now. Maybe if they say they saw it in GQ, a brand partner will come along. Look, he really believes in this thing. And that, <laughs> man. Has a brand partner believed in it? Uh, I don't know doesn't, yet. Doesn't matter. Reviews.org behind it. You also believed in the concept of soft shell crab. And that's like, I still down, believe so. in the concept of soft shell crab. <laughs> okay. So before we go, let me just read you the, the recipe to help you make up your mind. So he's got a one giant a box of cornflakes. One incredibly large novelty lighter. He said, I always liked the idea of doing a little flambe. Nine packs of pre-sliced cheese and sauce. 
Like a tomato sauce? No, just any sauce. <laughs> so <that'd be> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. He's not going above no, Molly Bowser's cookbook. No, no like, he's I'm got to because the, the sheer chaos of this, the misanthropy of it. <laughs> like, yes, he played Batman. But he is the Joker. He just wants to watch the world burn while making his pasta waffle cones. And yep. I am here for it. But Molly Baz has a cash or pepper that she pours an entire bowl of red wine into, so... Like, chaos like, comes in all forms. You could pour an entire bottle of red wine into a waffle cone. I actually don't think that that would work. I, th I think that it would drip. But that's what the pre-sliced cheese is for, to seal it. And make it I guess yeah, that is mostly it. plastic. Exactly. It's it's to waterproof it. Look, I, I understand and I really, like, I respect what you're trying to do here. I think that if it was just Robert Pattinson, I would put him higher. But we're talking about his actual redemption arc and we're not talking about his recipe for a pizza cone pillow. It's all part of the narrative. He almost <laughs> got kicked off the lighthouse. Yeah, like, I think that he's he's definitely a character. He's definitely got something... He's definitely got something. I just, I don't think that he is number four material. Not his redemption arc. He is, know. but his redemption arc is not. I don't know. I... I'll put him above Marvel Snap, though. Oh, oh of course you oh, but will. What about your drink bottle? <laughs> is he better than the pro high-end drink bottle? Is he better than the perfect drink bottle? Is it the perfect <laughs> redemption arc? No. Well, how can you say that yours is the perfect drink bottle when you've never tried to drink water out of a pasta waffle cone look we can have this argument over and over and over again you tried to say this about a like a goat's bladder last time and i will tell you the same thing i don't think it's dishwasher safe fair enough fair enough okay look i think he belongs above double tap at least it's robert pattinson it's robert pattinson's redemption arc that's a great redemption arc. he started so norm core and he went so weird yeah, that's a, that is. A, I guess that's a redemption arc in a way. Yes, that's exactly for the what it sickos. Is. Ferg yeah. would have your back. <laughs> I think he would. No, I, I think between Pro Iron and Double Tap. That's what I think. All right. Yep, I'll take that. Once again, fine. <laughs> Look, I still think he's better than a drum kit, but you know, I is it because you tap all. that, but you won't tap the drum kit? Ooh. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we have. Three new additions to the list. Apple's latest software innovation for wearables, Double Tap at number eight, Macro Droid at number 12, and we have Robert Patterson's Redemption Arc at number seven, which is just below the perfect drink bottle. This is a mighty fine looking list. I, I, feel, I feel like I could stand by this in a court of law. I feel like if pressed by opposing counsel, I could I could defend this list. Definitely. Well, that does it for us for this week. If you want to try your hand at reviewing stuff, you should review us. A five-star rating and review goes a long way for a baby podcast like us. We're just like Double Tap. We have so much potential, and we'd really appreciate your support. So Double Tap that five-star button. Oh, I think single tap because I think a double tap might actually undo the rating after you rate us, so don't do that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Three taps is fine. Yep. Yeah. Um, so uh, thanks to uh, Nola, Adam, and Brody for their thoughtful reviews this week. Um, Anola, if our listeners want to find you on the socials, where are you at? Um, well, you can find me talking nonsense on TikTok, uh, and you can find me on threads at Anola Palooza. Um, Adam, what about you? Uh, you can find me on reviews.org slash AU or uh, sitting here trying to make ridiculous and stupid macros for my phone. Excellent. And Brody, where can we find your Robert Patterson fan fiction? Uh, not on the socials, but you will be able to find my RPATS fanfic on, uh, if you sign up to the Watchlist newsletter, which is our weekly streaming newsletter on reviews.org slash AU. You're going to have to deliver on that, Brody. Happy to. Yep. We'll link it in the show notes. And if you want to follow me, I'm at a Horosh, A C H O R O S. The C is silent on Freds and Instagram. If you want to get in touch or you've got something you'd like us to review, slide into our DMs on any other platforms. You'll find links in our show notes. And until next time, this has been We Review Stuff, and that's the stuff. Bye.